Hey, everybody. How you doing, Jack? How you doing, Andrew? Good. Very good. So here we are today for Jack Savage, digital artist, a tour of his wonderful art, find out what he's been up to in the different galleries and uh, events he might be going to. People are starting to come in. So yeah, as people come in, just want to remind you to let us know where you're watching from. Welcome, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Pleasure, Andrew, that you've invited me on your show. Yeah, it will be great. Yeah. And uh, when people, I'll, I'll say it now, but when people, more people come in also, oh, here they come. So just a reminder, if you're watching from any of the Facebook groups, please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pics. So I'll be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. Just right underneath the live, scroll down a little bit until you see a link for StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Click that, give permissions to jump on back. And I realized I need a little color here. So I'm going to <laughs> my color. Blue's good. <laughs> you like blue, Jack? Is that good? I can only see the screen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. So blue. Okay, cool. So, yes. So once again, welcome everybody. Let us know where you're watching from. Don't be shy comment underneath the lives wherever you're watching from youtube facebook linkedin x used to be twitter cool i think people are being shy today okay <laughs> so we got a lot to go over so let's jump on in so um, share your screen so there it is i already see it so yeah as you can see uh Jack Savage's vicissitudes of desire. So first off, what does that mean? Vicissitudes. So, that a... uh, most of my influences, Andrew, are markedly more cinematic and photographic, or at least they were in the early days. Uh, this is, I've produced many series of what I call contemporary photographic film noir. And uh, th these photographic series are indebted to the ghosts of our cinematic past, particularly film noir the era of film noir cinema 1920 to 1950. Great. Uh, a lot of monochromatic tones shadow and light play so myself and, and dylan decided to curate this as a solo exhibition for the influx gallery i think Great. we used 20 pieces uh, i first came to prominence through this black and white film noir work so a lot of storytelling ambiguity shadows light nice. uh, criminological overtones Excellent. kind of uh, a lot of hidden sexuality beneath beneath uh, veneer a little tension there also. a lot of tension yeah <laughs> as you know i'm a big fan of cinema so a lot of crime films and a lot of the old old hitchcock billy wilder excellent yeah nice yeah. black and whites and stuff. and then while we're here since it does say you know influx gallery did you want to uh, just talk a little bit about the Influx Gallery, let people know? Yes. So in 2022, myself and a colleague, uh, we opened an online gallery called Influx Gallery. I was lucky uh, to get a big response and some of the biggest photographers and digital artists in world photography came on board and, and digital art, including yourself, Andrew. Uh, we curate exhibitions and uh, next year we're going to be doing shows in London. So it's, that's going well. Excellent. Uh, it's a nice little side hustle to my artistic my own individual artistic career as you know andrew as an artist it can be individually all consuming so having like uh, being able to curate other people's art is is a real godsend for me so it doesn't become so individualistic excellent and uh people are saying hello so first we have uh muhammad so nice to see you here guys good luck yeah can i just mention uh Part of the Influx Gallery is also Mohammed from Tunisia. Uh, he's been absolutely influential to the growth of the gallery. Excellent. So myself, Dylan, and Mohammed opened the gallery. Sorry cool. for admitting you, bro. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. And then uh, I guess since we started a little bit late, Stephen said almost gave up on you guys. <laughs> and then came back and said hello from Prescott Valley, Arizona. We're just fashionably late. Yeah, and there he is on Facebook as well. And then um, a friend of mine who is in the groups, 
distorted imagination influx going to have to check it out Graz. now um so just to answer what he might be asking later on as well as other people who are viewing uh the influx gallery are they taking new artists and are they open to ai artists yes we're very open to a explorations in ai a lot of our artists already do such explorations cool. uh, if you go on our website there will be a page where artists can submit work uh, check it out we love to to see new talent from around the world uh, there's painters sculptors digital artists straight photography we're open to everything and uh, one of my favorite artists on the roster is actually uh, patrizia burra the cool. italian cool. photographer well 3d and ai artists and she's really pushing the boundaries between ai 3d and portrait photography so i really believe in the new technology and where it can take take us as an artist as i know that with your own work andrew you you have exactly the same ethos yeah and it's 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 being integrated i mean the truth is like it or not it's being integrated and uh i like it i find it another creative outlet another uh, way of looking Absolutely. at creativity and and then I also find it to be very helpful. So the way it's being integrated into Adobe is excellent. So like with Photoshop, I can now like retouch an arm or add an arm with, uh, you know, generative AI faster than I ever could, you know, years ago when I was doing heavy retouching. Absolutely. And, and then, you know, to expand, you can expand the canvas and it like builds out the image for you. That That's mind boggling. And then now with Adobe Express, there's all these great like kind of AI templates they're generating and other AI elements. So great stuff. Let's see who else here. So uh, my friend Suzanne's here. Finally, my internet is back. Phew. So good to see you here, Suzanne. And then uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, just sort of imagine it. Great question, Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. I read your mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then Robert checking in from Portland, Oregon. Great. Good to see you here. Hi, guys. I was Thanks so, for joining us. So Jack has a lot to show us. So um, show, show you begin. Click the uh, yep. forward arrow. Let's see. So this piece is entitled Moon Goddess. So it's a combination of studio portraiture with AI. So it's a studio portrait with textures. And the, through my server and then edited on photoshop and then real quick um i love your work so i want to uh, have it be shown in the most respectful manner as possible if any of my adobe friends who are watching know how to stop the auto advance in acrobat reader please let us know we didn't have much time it started kind of doing that on its own right before we went live so do let us know in the comments how to turn off this damn auto <laughs> advance for such a well-known artist we're quite technologically behind here andrew <laughs> for that aspect of me, right sorry for the embarrassment yeah i need to, i need to get you know up in my yeah. education about acrobat a little bit more but uh, yeah. yeah yeah all right so that's great so yeah if you want to go to next good so this one uh, was a more dali s piece so it encompasses street photography of a factory near where i live I used a generative expand on the wall. So I thought, how can I get the top of that wall so it looks good? So I used the AI tools in Photoshop there with a the generative expand. And then I used, I think I used Filter Forge on the girl's face to kind of melt it, it's kind of create a kind of melting face type look. And then I wanted uh, the girl to be kind of like dressed like a young Jewish girl, which I think kind of works with a piece on that ambiguous storytelling it tells a story with a kind of lowry uh, you know uh, is it js lowry andrew the british uh, painter that did yeah a lot i've of, heard yeah yeah he did a lot of industrial scenes and uh jack real quick do you want to try um my friend steven says try Control shift H to stop the auto scroll. Control shift H. Yeah. Oh. Or did it create this new thing? Yeah, it's done this new thing. Hey, okay, try it again. Control shift H. Oh, nice. Here we go. The only thing is it created this vertical 
Yeah, your friend is a genius. Thank you very much. He's yeah, so now someone. you just need to scroll vertically. Yeah, yeah, so now I can just scroll thank to you, the Steven. next Thank you, Oh. Is that the right? There we go. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, this, is, this is a studio self-portrait. So I'm a big fan of shadows and the oh, you jumped, directors. Yeah. It's still oh. jumping. Yeah. yeah. Jumping. I don't think that worked, Stephen. So any way to just stop the auto scroll, let us know for Acrobat Reader. Of course, it happened right before we went live. So. Yeah. It's always a way, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Ah, it's jumping. Maybe get out of that. Try. Um, yeah, it needs to be in full page mode for the, the uh, display, Stephen. Okay. Is it stopped now? Looks like it might no, be. No, no. Okay. Sorry. To keep your hand on the uh, arrows to keep it there. Okay. So, yeah, self portrait. Yeah. So, I did a self portrait, which has uh, got a lot of shadow play on the face. Uh, I used a, a, com a, a half background in my studio. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to recreate, really, a modern take on the work of Otto Preminger, Fritz Lang, Sidemark, Hitchcock, Wells, Wilder, John Huston, and uh, one of my favourite directors, John Ford, as well. Okay, change. Okay, let's, let's try this real quick, Jack. Sorry about this, but um, let's see. Um, choose... In Acrobat, choose tools, organize pages, and then page transitions. All tools. Uh, top, like organize right pages. Oh no, it's not letting me do that. It's saying upgrade now. Okay, click that and see if it lets you jump back or something. Yeah, hit the X. Um, that'd be pretty crappy if they made it so you'd have to do that. <laughs> It's when I, I'm not in full screen mood mode, it's okay, I think. It's not jumping. Yeah, it just doesn't look good though. Yeah. It the full. Yeah. Sorry for these technical problems, folks. Yes. I do apologize. Okay. Okay, let's let's go on to the next. Um did you want to keep it in this view then? Uh, it's up to you, Andrew. Whatever you whatever you think. Okay. This image was shot through a Parisian uh, bus window. And it's uh, of a, a young lady in Paris. I added textures and dust to the window. Uh, this image gained myself first place at the Monochromatic Awards nice. in London in 2022. Uh, very film noir, very Parisian as well. So myself and my colleague, Dominic Abbey, we went uh, to an exhibition in Paris, Image Nation beautiful gallery there was four floors of exhibiting artists right and, then and this was one of the pictures that i took on my little fuji and jack we're having a little bit of tech gremlins today your video is not showing i hear your voice just fine but you're there's just an icon for you okay so i don't know if you need to go to any settings yeah let's get back to this view while we do that sorry everybody a little glitch we'll be i wonder why that is your browser has lost its connection to the camera. So a way to click something real quick. There okay, we you're, go. Back. you're back. Okay, great. So yeah, switch back to the slide view. There we go. Are we all good? Yep. Okay, good. Brilliant. Okay. Sorry, sorry for the technical hitches, folks. So this was a composite image before the days of AI, actually. Uh, again, very film noir. I took it of my friends. It's a big Victorian disused railway tunnel uh, just out a little village outside of the, the town of Northampton where I live. So I photographed him through the tunnel, like holding onto the bars. And then I composited this in Photoshop back in the days where digital artists just had to be composite compositing artists. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then I put some like newspaper clippings in the background. I think this got second place at the PX3 Awards Paris as well. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to combine it. And obviously, like, uh, I did a young black girl, which sort of adds a kind of uh, 
political bent to the image. Friend John is here too, saying hello. Hey, John. We hey, needed you. We needed you on the tech front today, John. Yeah, you, you got to. John, if you know how to get to full screen view without it auto advancing an Acrobat reader, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> Tech support, John. Come on. <laughs> and then Jennings is here, coming in late as usual. Good to see you here, Jennings. Uh, do you want to go to the next image? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. this was a, a recent image. So I used uh, studio photography with AI. Uh, I can't remember what i think this is part of a vicissitudes of desire series so to me this image is very hitchcockian uh rear window comes to mind or i confess some of his 1950s classics intrigue mystery hidden sexuality female desire and some ghostly apparitions in the background as well it's Quite all the exactly. same same uh, model, same woman as well. Uh, it's the same woman modified yeah. in AI. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Pretty cool. Thank you. I used also textures and grain because obviously the the nineteen fifties cinema. When you look at it today, it would make a great movie poster as well. So. Thank you, Andrew. I've always, as a portrait photographer, I've always loved the idea of mirrors and faces in in mirrors from multiple angles there's always something intriguing and mysterious about a face in a mirror and then you added your own kind of like sepia tone to it I presume. yeah i added grain and a few textures and stuff like that and i actually cut out all those mirrors and composited them together so this piece took a long long time to make excellent this uh was this piece is labeled girl on the train. So it's, I think this was uh, way before the days of AI. I think it was nine or 10 different photographs composited together. Once, once nice. some uh, big awards, again, very cinematic in the early days. My, my focus was definitely on cinema, cinematic photography, gradient maps, and uh, monochromatic tones again with a, a strong emphasis on mystery intrigue john says yeah. that is that is fantastic ambiguous storytelling thank you john appreciate it that's pretty cool so here we have another neo-noir piece called intricacies again, are you the model for this no, no, no. This was a piece of digital art. I think I got it from Shutterstock. Oh, so, nice. yeah. So part of the film noir ethos is is the sleuth for the private detective. As you know, Andrew, being living in LA right now, right. films like LA Confidential and well, go way back. So you've got like the detective in the doorway of light, and then I just added gradients and stuff like that. Sure. Duplicated it. All right, now we head towards another one of my overriding passions, which is street photography. I uh, created this. I wanted to do a piece based on Sal Leiter. So I combined street photography with Photoshop and put some extra rain glass on there. Did my own little signature love as if someone had drawn it on the window. Like a combination between street photography and manipulation and that's the beauty of photoshop isn't it you can you can take something your favorite genre and you can just take it at one stage further yeah that's great i love the colors in this and do you know uh, sal lighter's work andrew it's a great american street photographer i think he was from new york sounds familiar sounds familiar yeah This is another street photography piece, uh, combining street photography with painterly elements. Uh, I do love a, a raindrop wind, a, a rain soaked window as well. Looking through a rain soaked window where all the colors distort and it becomes like a painting. And then you've got the, the shadows and the silhouettes and 
if you look closely, some faces as well appear out of the darkness. And is this, um, so you have like the grouping of it, uh, people and then you came back with the different sections of color and then changing the blending modes and all that? Absol yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Coloring little bits. and I use topaz and some brushes as well for the painterly elements. It's a nice kind of moody uh, stained glass window feel. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think there's a, something enchanting about the silhouette as well, like something ambiguous and dark and un, unseen and unsaid about a silhouette, a faceless entity. It makes me think of the Beatles song, All the Lonely People, kind of. Yeah, yeah. As you know, in a city, it can be so, so packed with people, yet you can still feel lonely at times. Yeah, that's great. Multitudes of lives living all simultaneously. Here's another image. Uh, street photography, distorted, made painterly. I think I use some filters on this one. Again, heavily silhouette, silhouette based. Again, this is inspired by Sal Leiter. I like his work and I wanted to do a contemporary sort of take on that kind of street photography. I like the, the play of texture between kind of the rain on the window and then it looks like it almost like scratched uh, surface yeah. or scratched window. Yeah, definitely an, a, a piece that combines street photography with neo-noir. It's kind of got noir city, city-like lights coming in through the piece. This one went down, I made some sales of this with my gallery and a few so people. So Steven says, uh, this work is very imaginative. Nothing I would ever have thought to do, which is nice. Appreciate that, Stephen. Thank you very much. And uh, Robert says, and painterly as well. I appreciate that very much. Cool. And we go onwards. This is some more street photography. I'd say abstract street photography with a 1950s bent. She got the old Polaroid. Thanks, Andrew. I actually got the, the the old film Polaroid effect around the outside there, if you can see. And kind of keep it to like a... Or even a CD screen. cover too. Like, it's like, a, like a jazz that. CD cover as well. Yeah. I, I do like my jazz and blues music. Well, we're both very big music fans. I think that mm -hmm. has a profound influence on our work. No, I've, uh, Andrew's introduced me to some brilliant music in the electronic genre. Which is all from your land. <laughs> yeah. Right, all the UK electronic music I love, you know. Yeah, isn't that funny? How, I like the, the uh, sepia tone really well. Yeah. Well, the, the UK electronica in, inspires your art. And then the American photography inspires mine. It's a nice balance, yeah, this right? is awesome. yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. When you take uh, influence and culture from other cultures and incorporate them into your work, the world is quite a small place when you look at it like that. So it's, it's always good to embrace different art forms, aesthetics and cultures. Again, I love in this piece, this I love how you can't. You can't quite see those faces like they're they're obscured and I, I think there's i love that there's something about a face being shadowed or obscured it makes it more powerful the storytelling involved again I so use a lot speaking of, of music this one reminds me of can you hear me jack i can hear you I think there's a bit of a lag, but um, yeah, I think there's just a bit of a lag. But uh, I think, speaking of music, this one reminds me of uh, the Peter Gabriel uh, album cover where he's in the car and there's that texture on the thing. And it also reminds me of the kind of, the kind of scratching down gesture he made with his fingers. Yeah, cool. Big Genesis fan right here. The old not stuff, so much, right? not so much Phil Collins though. <laughs> right. Cool. 
So here we have, uh, I'd, I'd say, a multi-collage piece using AI and Photoshop. Renaissance art taken into the modern realms via Mid Journey. And then I think I used channels and uh, to separate the people. And then I used a kind of multi-exposure Renaissance feel on this piece, which is entitled The High Tides of Time. Nice. I'm a big fan of Renaissance, Renaissance art. So when you did this piece, did you do a series? Yeah, I was going to say. It looks yeah, like this, this, is part of a, this is part of a series called uh, The High Tides of Time. And kind of like uh, classical art meets multi-exposure meets AI with a golden age color palette. And then Soft. I'll compose bits of, bits of London in the background. Zoss is amazing. And uh, also Robert says this is amazing. So, yeah. oh, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Cool. So this is another piece from a series called The Herd. So again, big crowds of people. Uh, sort of Titarenko style, long exposure, ghostly, ghostly long exposures embedded with a golden age color palette. Again, I, I was thinking old London when I, I used uh, street photography with AI and lots of textures. So uh, can you take a question, Jack? Of course. So Susan, my friend Suzanne asks, do you have a preconception of the images or do they evolve as you work on them? It's a good one. Good question. A mixture of both. So I do sometimes have an idea that I want to uh, perfect, but sometimes it does just come organically as I'm working and the direction, directional change, and you just get so in, involved in the piece. You're sitting there and you, I just don't leave my office and <laughs> finish work and then start creating. I don't as, leave until it's finished. Has a life of its own, right? Absolutely, yeah. And then uh, Zosh says, it's, uh, I'm imagining whirling dervish piece on a Renaissance piece. Kind of like two worlds coming together, I guess. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think that uh, the advent of AI has allowed has allowed that. You know, the, the possibilities are endless now. It's where you can go as a digital artist or photographer. And, and I know a lot of painters uh, are using it as well. Like, uh, obviously, you, you've got your stalwarts that are steadfastly like it's destroying artists. But uh, I don't know. I think you've got to use the technology to your advantage. Yeah, and I think you can personalize it. So, I mean, for me... I can go in and put in a prompt and create an image, but then I do bring into Photoshop and, you know, first I run it through, um, what's it called? Topaz, Topaz photo AI yeah. which brings out the detail. And then I'll do various things in Photoshop, like color grading and, and, you know, take out elements and add elements. So, yeah, you know, move the eye around, make it the way I want it to be. Well, we were doing that before AI, weren't we, Andrew? We were doing a lot of digital yeah. collage. Yeah, just AI becomes like a new source of kind of stock imagery for us as well. Absolutely, yeah. And it's it's better than searching through Adobe stock or Shutterstock. So yeah. do you remember your your old astronaut pieces, Andrew, where I loved? You did a whole oh, yeah. set, some of those spacemen. N now you can generate those kind of images via prompt and, and make them more personalized. But I guess back in the day, you had to go to sites like Shutterstock and Adobe Stock to get get the images. Absolutely, collage. Cool. So this is my uh, girlfriend Marie and myself. Uh, in, this is studio portraiture meets AI again. So I wanted to get a certain re Renaissance hues and Golden Age color palettes. Uh, she's Irish, so I wanted to encapsulate I'm my mother's Welsh. So I wanted to get the kind of like the Celtic uh, Viking feel, again with a mirror 
I know. I just love this piece. It's an interesting contrast too, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's actually studio portraiture meets AI and it just shows what can be done. Uh, and I composited myself in the mirror from different angle. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, in, intentional, but um, with you, your eyes a little, you know, wet. So it looks like there's some emotion there. Like almost, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I did know it wasn't actually intentional, but it works. Yeah. I've actually, uh, the thing about this piece, as you know, the magic of photography and digital art, Andrew, it doesn't have to be based on realism. I've actually got blue eyes. But when I started color grading this piece and adding Renaissance tones and textures and stuff like that, it actually made my eyes green. And I thought, oh, that looks cool. I'll, <laughs> I'll, yeah, keep, keep, the green, I'll keep the green eyes with a Celtic flavor. Yeah, it keeps with the color theme. Yeah. And the hair is very painterly, has a nice painterly. Yeah, hair. so I don't like think it would have worked as well if I had my, my blue eyes, my realistic blue eyes in the piece. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you, Andrew. So this is, again, studio portraiture that I took into AI, and then I composited the background in Photoshop. Very painterly, yeah. Thank you. Again, a Renaissance portraiture. I've always, I think I've had got a few series now. One's called uh, Timeless Por Portraits, Old World Sensibilities. And, uh, yeah, so I've always had that Renaissance element to my portraiture studio work. I like the crackling paint kind of look going through her as well. So. Thank you. So I've recently moved studio to uh, it's a 16th century building right in the Northampton town centre. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. I've got church light coming through my windows. There's uh, a lot of other artists scattered around the, the 16th century building. Some really nice people. Uh, business has certainly got better because so there's, so there's, mo there's multiple studios in that building. Yeah, it's huge. It's like a huge 16th century building. I've got a painter that lives, uh, her, sorry, her studio and her boy. I've got a sound engineer, her boyfriend, Sarah's boyfriend. He's set a whole recording studio up above me. And then she's half to the studio and she does her painting up there. She's lovely. Her name's Sarah. The sound then, doesn't disturb you too much, does it? Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, Andrew, but it, he, he makes like gothic techno, which is not really my bag. <laughs> it's kind of like techno with a gothic. A little repetitious twist. at times. Absolutely. But he's a lovely chap. He's from Canada. So he's, yeah. he's actually quite a successful uh, mix sound engineer. So he's already, he's making, he made making records with artists in LA. So he sometimes stays here till six in the morning. Cause obviously with the a LA time difference working with these artists, but the people here are just fantastic and there's so much going on and uh, we're aiming to stage like joint exhibitions and it's just like a really positive, positive vibe here, which is great. And do you have a space in the building where you can have a show itself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my actual studio is uh, it's full of stuff, but if I can store the stuff, it would make a great gallery. It's got like beautiful wooden floorboards and high ceilings and nice. it's really nice. Yeah. So this is a piece called Vertigo. Again, street photography given a Renaissance kind of bent. And was the, was the woman... Uh behind the window originally like that or did you add that element or i added it mate it, yeah she was uh i'd use blur and renaissance textures and and rain glass nice yeah part of the fun of photoshop again sure i love the color the color grading of this one kind of like royal red mix yeah, with gold. Nice. yeah keeps it balanced so uh, I'm represented by galleries now in uh, London, Milan, Paris, and San Francisco. Mm. This is one of the pieces for sale. I've recently been snapped up by Singular Paris. He's a big online gallery. Be quite a, a big artist to get in there. And uh, this was one of the pieces they liked. Uh, very Dali-esque based on surrealism. 
I used AI to create the initial character and then I composited different elements and used paint brushes, painterly brushes and graffiti brushes in Photoshop. Nice. Uh, all of my work is created with the intent of selling in a gallery. There's, there's a strong gallery oriented ethos to my creative process. Uh, Rob, Robert says for the, uh, the previous image, it recalls the American painter, Isabel Bishop. Oh, brilliant. I'll have to check her out. Yeah. Cool. I wish I was more clued up on art history, but that, that, that sounds really cool. Nice reference. Thank you, Robert. It's hard to keep track of everyone, right? All these great artists. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's another surreal piece. Lots of Photoshop work here. Not too much AI. It's more like uh, many layers in Photoshop and much messing about. <laughs> But it's the, it's the one image of the older man, and then you dissected. Yeah, the absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you, Andrew. What do you call this one? I can't remember the title for this one. Sure. But I know that the original old man did come from Mid Journey. Gotten so good that it really looks like a photograph that you. Yeah, it's kind of surreal collage. And if you look at the bottom left of this piece, you'll see like a young Parisian girl, which I oh, st yeah. stole from a painting and embedded it into, into the, this painting. Cool. So this is, uh, again, an example of digital collage. Lots of textures, lots of silhouettes. Lots of double meanings, lots of ambiguities, shadow play, and light. Post, poster for a surreal movie. Yeah, with I've, for some reason I've, I've I like I always put a little graffiti tag. It's and it's either love or savage. And I know you like the savage, don't you, Andrew? Because uh, my website is www.savagedart, and we always have a laugh about that. That's right. Which we'll talk about savaged. Yeah, and art. Yeah. So if ever me and Andrew are feeling like a little bit depressed, we just say savage dart and it puts a smile <laughs> on our <the> face. <laughs> Gets us it's the, the little back. things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. So this is uh, AI. I generated a picture of Van Gogh, if you look to the bottom right. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lots of digital. It also color. looks like a self-portrait. Yeah, a lot. This is actually a lots of curves. So I'm I'm doing I'm messing around with curves layers, implanting bits painterly brushes. But when you when you use curves, you can get real psych create some psychedelica in Photoshop. Right when you invert, right invert curves. Absolutely, or when you you know when you just have a curves layer right. and you clip you clip it to a piece <clears throat> like a selection. And then you just go up and down on the curves and it That's just right. cre creates some crazy, crazy effects. So Steve, Steve Palmer, photographic art says, brilliant again, Jack. And Thanks, John, so John says, I want to be a savage artist. <laughs> John, you're invited. You've always invited into our club. That's right. I think he's going to be presenting uh, beginning of uh, February too. So do a live with John. I always love John's shows. He's been busy. I've been wanting to get him to do lives with me, but he's busy. Yeah, he's getting very good. And I love the way he incorporates a lot of uh, Adobe Adobe programs. On, I see he's been using After Effects. Yeah, and he's a Adobe community expert as well. John. Yeah, look, look forward to John's future programs and his new work too. And then uh, my friend Lupus says, uh, Jack, I always love your great cre creativity. John thanks says, so thanks, much. thanks, Lupus. Cool. Again, we go uh, kind of dark Renaissance piece. If you look to the bottom left, you see a kind of nun praying. Oh, yeah. And then you've got multiple faces. And if you look to the, the top right, you see a d demonic face. 
and then I used a bit of zoom blur, cut some eyes out. Uh, I used a smudge tool on those eyes. Probably mm -hmm. know all about you know all about that yourself, eh, Andrew? So the the top right faces you after a night out. If you over, yeah, yeah, too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's me after a night out, inverted in Photoshop. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I like the color of sensibilities too. Like you said, the Renaissance, that kind of. Yeah. I remember uh, I worked for the um, Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. And I remember they had uh, one or two Rembrandts. And I remember just going up and studying it as, you know, as I worked there. And I would just study that those beautiful golds and browns and such a historically dense time like it really held that kind of that golden almost like here as you have with the candle and it, it, it emanated that candle lit quality a lot yeah yeah absolutely and it's timeless so, you know like these painterly techniques are still being used in the history of art from then to the modern day nice it's interesting Rembrandt's history too, right? It wasn't he like very successful, but then later on he went into debt or something. Like he's he saw like the true polarities of life. Or, yeah, you know. absolutely. And he actually his paintings were the photographic principles used in studio photography today were used in his paintings. So he used to paint, get his subject to lie in the attic, one one light coming through the attic roof placed at a 45 degree ang angle creating that beautiful rembrandt light that he used to paint his subjects in is is often used in the studio photographic studio today so you can get one one studio light a model do the same principles and i was a printmaking major so i really loved his etchings as well the, the yeah line work he did yeah yeah and that's Steve says, uh, this inspires me, Jack. Thank you for sharing your insights of your process. Thanks so much. I appreciate that, Steve. Appreciate all of you for tuning in today. Cool. So this is another gallery orientated piece of work embedded with canvas layers, lots of digital collage here, cutting bits out and uh, messing around with the concepts of surrealism. Again, with my own signature little, try to keep it upbeat by putting love and it cre creates a bit of ambiguity too. Quite a positive person. So I like to incorporate, even though my work is quite dark, I yeah. like to incorporate positivity as well. Uh, some paintbrushes, again, some elements of surrealism used within the piece. Yeah, there's a real push pull going on with it, which is nice, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a combination between digital collage, Photoshop brushes, and AI with some canvas textures. This was a piece that myself and my girlfriend did together. She has no Photoshop skills, but we just sat there and put our heads together for like a couple of hours, and it's called Torn. It's quite good. Uh, she's very proud of it and uh, made some sales of this as well. It's one of her pieces represented by my gallery in Paris. Again, and, uh, a, lot, a lot of digital collage. And Jack, I thought there might, I just realized there might be a way to, to make this look even better. Um, on the left where it says all tools, click that X and see if that kind of just makes it more simple in the background. In the Acrobat, yeah. So all tools. Yeah, and then the X right there uh, down, and then to the right. Ah. Up, yeah, hit the X. Yeah, see, ah. so now it's just yeah, that's, really, that's great. Should have done that 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So this is a piece, uh, <laughs> my friend Tyrone, and uh, we, we're doing a collaborative project, and this was uh, – one of those pieces called Reverb, I think. Again, lots of techie details, psychedelica. And did you have a um, color version of this as well? It started as color, but then 
I, I think it just looked better as black and white. Sure. Be interested to see both versions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I exhibited this. We did a big exhibition. At, uh, it was kind of like the leaving do for my old studio. Myself and Tyrone, we curated an exhibition entitled Delve, and it was uh, 15 Northampton artists from painters to graffiti artists to mm. photographers. This was one of the pieces. I printed this large on board, I think 150 centimetres by 150 centimetres. It looked great. Excellent. So when you print on board, it's it's really cool because it's cheap, it's high quality, and also it's so light. So as you can imagine, 150 centimetres by 150 centimetres, all you do is clip something on the back of it, and it can just go straight on a wall, straight on a client's wall. How big but, is that inches wise or feet wise? Do you know about 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters and feet wise, uh, feet wise, I'd say five, ooh, 4.5 by 4.5 foot. Nice. Yeah. Good size. Yeah. Yeah. Really good size. Uh, and it was such a great exhibition. Cause if you can imagine Andrew, you've got, before you've got the guests that come to the exhibition, you've got 15 artists and all their friends and families. And uh, it turned just into one big party, really. It was fun. great. Yeah, so much fun. I'm definitely going to do it again. I was going to say, that was a problem that I had uh, earlier on with my work is I would create images small and then someone would want to buy it and ask, you know, do you have it this size for print? And, and I didn't. And I think back in the day, they didn't have the best, you know, upscaling, resizing yeah. tools. Now I use to Topaz Photo AI and love it. But Oh, um, it's brilliant. You, back, yeah, so, so you yeah. can really upscale that work to gallery, gallery-orientated gallery work. Yeah. And as an artist, I think you, you, your intention is always to print. Like, we look, at, we look at great work on our computer screens every day, and we admire them, but the true went – when when they're printed in a gallery or in a home, that's when you can truly marvel at artwork. Yeah, it's nice to share it that way, you know. Then, then, it is. Then yeah. when when someone buys it, either the digital file and they print it, or you give them a um, your own print. When that happens, you realize that you're sharing it with a bunch of people because instead of it being one person having it on, say, their desktop. It's on a wall that various yeah. people will see. Absolutely. Or, you know, they might even put it in a gallery or an office and then lots of people might see it. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like it's immortalized then. Yeah. Cool. So this was another piece uh, inspired by the series of works I did with Tyrone. Turned into quite a pop art, pop art-y type piece. There's many different faces here, if you look. Faces to the bottom right, faces behind the grid here, a face on the top right. Nice layering. And then it it is such a different color palette than, say, yeah. the Rembrandt-esque. Yeah. yeah. It's very pastel-y pop art with a metallic. There's a metallic feel to the, the model's face as well. But it's good not to be limited. To think yeah, like you always have to just do a certain color palette. And I think this is a great example of how you can take AI and still work on it. I think this took about 12 hours, this piece, or at least 10 hours or something like that. Yeah. So you can take the initial model from AI and just morph it and, and ex experiment and just take it to new dimensions. And nice. I guess I could have done the same back in the day with Shutterstock. I'm still a member of Shutterstock and I still do use digital assets. But the advent of AI has certainly helped uh, with the digital compositing side of things. Cool. That's very so painterly. Is, yeah. yeah, this is another piece uh, inspired by one of my idols, the British painter Francis Bacon. Oh, yeah. He's probably actually in London the same time as you, Andrew, when you live there. Francis Bacon. I might have even seen a show of his around that time too. Might yeah. Have yeah, we've had many a conversation about uh, your times at time in London sounded like a blissful period of your life. Yeah, nice to see a, a mix of the shows from uh, was it Chelsea College of Art and St. Martin's. And then yeah. 
bump ar- bop around to the different galleries. It yeah. Was a wonderful time. Yeah. Really I, like living, living through art culture. And that's so cool when, when you, you know, you're at university or you're at college and you're surrounded by artists and arts everywhere. And yeah, that's right. Cool. Yeah. Definitely the, the element of surrealism, uh, compositing those faces into the light bulb head was fun (laughs) again very dark when i look at it but oh well (laughs) yeah it's got a moodiness to it you know yeah yeah absolutely so um here's a question from steve steve palmer uh do you do your works as limited editions or limited to one so i started with a limited editions of 25 but for my galleries now uh, i'm doing limited edition ones of either 10 or three so yeah i find that the lower of a run uh you can sell it at a better price uh i tried all different ranges of price with selling my work in galleries and then a top curator contacted me from la and he said i love your work can i give you a couple of pointers are you are you open to some constructive criticism and i said yes of course he said now listen he said this is top level work but as an art collector if I look at this work and see a price of like three hundred, four hundred dollars, to me it's worthless. It's meaningless. Have some belief in your prices, and like if you if you create a, a top level piece of fine art, price it accordingly. So that's what I've done. I've done now. I think it's. I, yeah, I think it's great to, to charge what you believe your work should get, but I do think that it's nice to give discounts to friends at times you know absolutely and i think have a range of prints so obviously like if it's an original on a big big mixed media based presentation it's going to be expensive especially with framed with art glass gallery framing but if you're just selling like a a a limited edition run of prints as a run of 50 or 100 you can do a lower price and still sell some some of your work Yeah, I mean, there's a psychology to it for sure. I remember being like in um, like an art college and having school shows and then people, you know, us individuals would choose our own prices for the school. And then anytime I saw someone who had a really low price, I was like, why do they do that? You know, it's, it's yeah. kind of demeaning to their own work. You know? Absolutely. And remember, there's a lot of money in the art world. <clears throat> so as an art collector... <clears throat> you know, you, you can sell and make, you know, you can get some big commissions and stuff like that. So my advice to any aspiring artists is have some belief and keep some faith in your work ethos and belief in how good your work is too. And, and how good it looks in a gallery or, or, or a home or hopefully one day a museum. Sure. And, and how many more pieces do you have here? Cause I wanted to jump into conversation too. So I don't know. Uh, I think we've got a few. This is like one that was a little bit basquiat orientated. Just flick through these now. This was one uh, painterly piece. Again, using AI in Photoshop with a lot of uh, different paint textures, a lot of curves, nice. layers. This was part of my Into the Blackness series as exhibited via Influx Gallery. Uh, strong influence here. The New York street artist Richard Hamilton. I right. did the Shadow Man series. Now, my uh, my friend, uh, where is it? The Lightroom Whisperer says, uh, if I discount for friends or not for profits, I bill the full value and show the discount on the invoice so they see the full value of the price. That's Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And this is the last piece again from that Into the Blackness series. In That's kind of nice. Nice painterly feel, very painterly, yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Cool, cool. So, yeah, any questions, let us know. And then I also wanted to give a shout-out to the different ways that you can find Jack online. Let's see, something popped up. So, yeah, let's see. uh, Well, Steve says, always a challenge, pricing versus sharing. Absolutely. And uh, John Williams says, every single one of these are so engaging. Yeah, great work. 
Appreciate that, Steve. Thanks, John. Appreciate kind words of appreciation. Wish we could have gotten the acrobat reader to, to do a nice yeah, stream. It's though. a shame. Next time we'll 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 be on that. You think in 2024 they would make like that one of the most easiest accessible things, you know? So yeah. If you're listening, Adobe, fix that. <laughs> now John says, by the way, I figured out a fix for your, your acrobat issue. <laughs> I knew you would, John. I knew you would. <laughs> Can you let us know what it is just for future reference? <laughs> Let's see if he might message me. Yeah, he did send me a screenshot. Full screen, uncheck advance every second or whatever. And then uh, Rose says, he, he, sorry. He's being <laughs> mischievous today. But, um, and then Rose says, hi, not sure why I didn't get a, a note of from Facebook that you were live. That's too bad. Yeah. But yeah, John right. says in Acrobat, you go to preferences, full screen, uncheck, advance every et cetera seconds. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you, John. In general, they need to make that more obvious, though, I think. I hope it wasn't too annoying for the viewers out there. And then Stephen says, I would rather give my friends a print than reduce the price. Yeah, that's just good ethos. Yeah. Yeah, I've done the same. Some people are really good friends to you in life and they deserve some of your art on the wall or sure. they've got families and they can't afford it. And I just feel like if they really love it, then it's a good, you know, yeah. person to give it to. Absolutely. Cool. So yeah, so let's let people know where to find Jack online. So here we go. First one's savaged hyphen art.com. Always brings a smile <laughs> to my face. But yeah, savage-art.com. You've seen a, a variety of Jack's work there, right, Jack? Yeah, thank you. Yep. And then what is the Black Line Gallery? Blacklinegallery.com. A, a, a gallery in San Francisco that sells some of my prints. Cool. Uh, lucky enough to be with some luminaries such as uh, Bansky and Mr. Brainwash and fail and some big graffiti artists and there was a mr brainwash i think show in beverly hills that i saw too. really cool yeah. and then uh passport out or pass how, how how might it be said pass part two and the conventional gallery this is my gallery representing me in milan uh i went out there with my italian friends in december i was a special guest at an exhibition there uh, called uh, Art Beyond Borders. We had a great time. My friend translated for me. Uh, the only the only thing with that, which was a, a little bit annoying, is we got there, I was special guest, and then they went, right, you're doing a speech. <laughs> I had no preparation. It was like five, oh, and then I had this uh, big crowd of Italian people, and I had to go up and, uh, it, what I've got to be honest, it wasn't the best speech of my life. Well, it's I rude found, when they do that too, right? I mean, it is, but I find there's a big difference between speaking in front of a large crowd and one of these, like when you're speaking online on Zoom or on a podcast or something, I'm quite comfortable. But when it was a big crowd, I didn't know where to look. And especially as they were all Italian, I didn't know whether to look at one person or, or to start moving sure. my eyes. So I ended up just concentrating on the gallery owner, Elena. She was lovely, which helped. <laughs> yeah. And then, as I said, uh, you know, do check out the Influx Gallery, influx-gallery.com. And then you can find Jack there at Influx Gallery at influx-gallery.com slash featured slash Jack slash Savage. And then if you're curious, I'm also on the Influx Gallery site. So Andrew at the Influx Gallery is influx-gallery featured Andrew slash Kavanaugh. And uh, in general, as I always say, subscribe for more digital art, Photoshop, and photography focused live streams and tutorials on my YouTube, youtube.com slash digital art drew. That's digital art drew on YouTube. Please subscribe. Feel free to go back and watch all the live events. There are a lot of great events from this year, which we just started, as well as previous years many from previous years so lots of great uh, teachers instructors digital artists and uh, good panelists so check it out so yeah youtube.com slash digital art drew 
I think it's and, always important to remember, Andrew, that the learning never stops when it comes to photographic and digital art learning. So I'm always checking out your past episodes and I love yeah, it. Always, always new innovations, updates. Yeah, I learned so much from watching your show and some of the guests that you have on. And it's uh, even if I miss the live, I always check it out on YouTube. Yeah. And speaking of which, if you uh, follow me on Facebook, I now recently switched to professional mode. So follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash andrew.cavanaugh. You can get updates about Adobe News events, my live events, tutorials, my digital art, and uh, maybe even contests that are happening in the groups. Speaking of groups, come join the AI Art and Digital Art Group, facebook.com slash groups, AI Art Digital Art. And you might have been watching from this group. If not, do consider joining as well. Come join the Photoshop and Lightroom Group, facebook.com slash groups, Photoshop Lightroom Group. Excellent. Thank you so much. And then we have... Uh, we have... Uh, John says, what a treat. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Bless you, John. Thanks so much. And uh, Steve Palmer says, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks so much, Steve. Appreciate you. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks so, yeah, so thanks much. everyone for checking it out. And as usual, I will post a link to the recording at the top of the Facebook groups and on my timeline. And Jack will be sharing it as well. And Robert says, thanks to you both. Thanks, Robert. Yep. So yeah, thanks for checking it out. Thanks, Jack. It was great stuff. And, thanks, Andrew. Pleasure. And then, maybe, and then as uh, me and Jack were speaking uh, privately, maybe in the future, we'll do like a panelist where we talk about um, AI art, digital art, pros and cons, things that we like. So something like that would be fun, right? Right, Jack? Yeah, be great. Be great. Great. Zoss says, great time Thank together. So and Lupus says, thanks for always putting great programs. And Jack, thanks. Thanks, Lupus. Appreciate yeah. everyone that's tuned in today. Cool. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And keep your eye out for the link to recording. Watch it on my YouTube. Feel free to subscribe and watch as many of the other events. And thanks, Stephen. Good job, guys, he says. Thanks, Stephen. Apologies for any technical issues that this show has. And it wasn't down to Andrew. It was down to myself. <laughs> yeah, we still got the the yeah. visuals out. We still got a nice yeah. show going. And John says later taters. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks, everyone.